Hi all, uh, my name is Ella Goldner and today I'm going to talk about phytoslicin. Phytoslicin is a piece of cake and we are going to discover why um, we can see that definitely uh, speaking of monetization for the network service provider, uh, you know, before 5G and before slicing came into the play, it was mostly about the uh, service being fast, basically the bandwidth of the service and perhaps uh, several types of service. This is it without really a differentiation of which services this satisfying SLA would be provided uh, by the service providers to the customers, including enterprise and consumer customers. For 5G, the key functionality that it is bringing, it is on how the network itself in a new different way would be monetized. And we can definitely see uh, by the survey that service providers are responding to that the major growth is actually for the next few years would actually be a monetization through the network slicing by actually providing services with differentiated SLA to a customers, including enterprise, including private customers, and actually differentiated payments per those types of slice. And this is something which will grow as 5G deployment grows. Uh, we can see uh, that, you know, by the survey which was implemented through a different service providers, again, another survey by Omdia this time, that the major trend that they see for 5G is not just providing a different data tires for a different customers per how much they pay or per the uh, bandwidth of the service that they are getting, but actually differentiated plans to a different customers and the variety of those differentiated plans. So we do not see that many already responding that they have clear plans on how exactly they do it. But we know that innovation is really there. And those who actually plan to provide those different monetization plans will also be able to monetize 5G and not just, you know, build the network without really getting back for their investment. Uh, just one more, you know, business slide to show you before we move to the technical aspects of the solution. And this is about changing of focus for 5G. If for the time frame of two years, we mostly see still, you know, the objective of improving system capacity, offer faster speeds to end user, for the time frame of five next years, we really see uh, the objective for 5G of addressing new market and services. Then they say new, we say new markets, which is mostly, you know, to address and, and new types of customers, enterprise customers, we see there a 42% actually uh, believing in it and changing their 5G focus. And this is where network slicing is strongly coming into the play. Uh, here we just, you know, wanted to highlight uh, several, you know, different types of the different services which are coming along with 5G and would be leveraging uh, high bandwidth, low latency, uh, mobility, mass device, actually those characteristics that, you know, 5G brings and differentiate from uh, a previous generation. I would say that the key here is the combination of high bandwidth and low latency, which goes along with gaming, you know, industrial automation for mass device, uh, high bandwidth, mining services, emergency service. The important point here is that each one of those categories do not necessarily require all altogether like high bandwidth, low latency, along with mass device and so on. All those are a different characteristics per each one of the service. And for each of those types of the service, the objective is to build the slice matching those service parameters or in another word have slices and then put a new service 
on the slices that we already have or create a new slice which match the characteristic and the requirements of service, which basically would satisfy the service requirements, the SLAs of the service providers. And this way, we can actually guarantee the SLA assurance between the service providers and the customer. Now, with that say, I would like to actually move to a bit more of the uh, technical discussion on how exactly that would need to be done. So what exactly Slice Manager is? Uh, Slice Manager consists of the several parts. And uh, uh, the definition for Slice Manager and the pieces as it builds, goes through and supported by a different standardization organization. We will talk about it a bit more. Specifically, that process that I'm showing you right now was defined by FreeGPP. So the key behind the process is the definition of life cycle of network slicing, which, com is, which consists of creation, modification, deletion of the network slice, definition and update of the services and capabilities to the network slice. Slides. So there is a preparation phase, which includes design, onboarding, the net and network environment preparation. And then there is a life cycle of a network slice, which is composed of creation, then operation life cycle itself within the bigger life cycle of the network slice. The operation includes, of course, activation, deactivation, supervision and reporting, modification if needed. Modification comes into the play in case there are measurements or there is machine learning which identifies that something needs to be done for a slice and then scaling or healing is implemented either on a network slice level or a separate network function level. Of course, the last phase is the commissioning of a slice or in another words, termination. So this is the process and how FreeGPP defines it. Uh, here, I am specifically talking about MDOC Slicing Manager, which, of course, is built following all those principles that I've shown on the previous picture of the different phases from which network slice is being uh, created, onboarding, and actually lifecycle management being managed, and in case it uh, needs to be terminated, terminated. So it includes the solution that we built, the slice design, slice automation and orchestration, and slice operation and management phase, and going through the different domains, rent, transport, and core. Now, it is very important to mention that slice manager, in order to satisfy end-to-end -end service requirements, need to run uh, through a different domains, rent, transport, and core, perhaps for different beams, perhaps for different clouds as well. So the real solution which should be built here is to be able to get the measurements, to get the real situation from all of the domain, to compare it against SLA of the service and to make appropriate actions in the appropriate domain in order to keep the level of quality provided by Slice at the level which is needed by the SLA and which is needed by the uh, service provider requirements. Uh, so horizontal integration is extremely important. Same for vertical integration, because you know you need also to have a catalog with the slices, you need to support the ordering system. All this should be done by TMF APIs in the standardized way. So any slice and manager system can connect to any BSS system. Uh, even with the charging, it also needs to be connected because uh, there is a new charging method developed in FreeGPP by which uh, Slice Manager actually reports for charging on the Slice level consumption, not uh, as a mobile session. And this is why also the integration with Charging Manager is needed here. And all this is being supported by MDOX Slice Manager. And I'm going to take, talk shortly about how that exactly relates also to on. Uh, so let me uh, take you uh, from the next one. Next one, uh, next one is actually show the lifecycle manager in a bit more details. You can see here clearly on the upper side of the picture 
the more details about the modules which compose our 5G slice manager on the slice design, it's XNF and service packages onboarding, slice and services modeling. On the slice automation and orchestration, it is a support of CSMF, NSMF, module CSMF with communication service manager function, NSMF is network service management function, NFVO, which is defined by its NFV, NSSMFs, those are domain manager for slice subnet, meaning RAN transfer to core. So CSMF, NSMF being end-to-end -end solution actually coordinate and correlate domain manager, DNF managers, of course, configuration management, homing and placement. This is the key functionality in order to understand where, which location, which cloud to take a network function from for the specific slice in order to actually satisfy the service requirements. As we know, for, for example, for the low latency service, the critical piece is that uh, the distributed user plan functions runs near the user in order to maintain low latency level. Policy engine, of course, along with the closed loop operation. And then on slice operation and management, of course, we have an inventory which uh, maintains the real-time uh, view of the resources in the network, analytics, machine learning, and performance fault manager that is needed in order to actually operate and maintain the slice. On the downside of the picture, we can actually see examples of several slides uh, either using shared network functions that you can see on the core side or using dedicated network functions that you can see on the transport side and also on RAN H side, for instance, in this particular case, uh, UPF and SMF in one case are shared, in the other case are distributed. Uh, now, uh, with this, I'm going to show specifically on how process of instantiation is being done. So slice instantiation. So first of all, of course, CSMF, which is a communication sphere management function. This is the highest layer. Then the uh, CSMF only gets a service request by its name from the upper BSS layer without really knowing yet what is network characteristic of the service. It, it gets a request for instantiation of a new slice, in this example for a smart factory. And now uh, its job is to decompose relevant end-to-end -end network slice template, retrieve configuration and placement data, look for available active resources, XNFs, and run network slice instantiation flow. Now the next uh, uh, step is XNFs resources, location, deployment, and instantiation to the domain controller, free domain controller, run H, transport and form. Uh, then a dedicated 5G core functions for new network slides allocated and deployed where dedicated are needed. Dedicated means that they serve only one slide, slides, which is typically, for instance, uh, you know, for the low latency service, those residing on H and serving that slice to get, again, distributed UPF, in some cases, even SMF close to the user. Next phase is XNFs configuration. And then the last one is uh, for the shared network function, UDM and SSF, CHF and PCF of the core. They are updated about new network slides. They already defined and they are going to be used in the shared mode for that same slide. Uh, also additional one in RF, AMF, NEF, NWDAF, AF and AUSF updated by UDM about the new network service that comes as the next step, of course, transport configuration, and then new network slice is established and can run through RAM transport and core. This is the slide number 12. I'm going to show the process of slice operation. And again, first of all, the performance of all data collection, PMFM, are being gathered from a different XNFs and infrastructure, firstly in its domain, then uh, consolidated and uh, whatever needs to be transferred from, is transferred to the end-to-end -end network management. Then performance breach notification is done in case of a need. Then all those, you know, uh, performance uh, and um, all data measurements 
are compared against the KPI. In case of a breach, there is an LCM action triggered in accordance with policy rules, which typically includes scaling or healing up, down, out, in of the slice of the network specific network function by action four. And then based on massive data collection, modeling, ML analysis, the system carried out performance prediction and provides early warning. So we know about the problem in advance and can take an actions in advance and not only then that a event of breaching occurs. So this is, um, you know, the way there is, it, it all will not happen one day. I would say at the beginning, we will go through the system based on the statistics, not necessarily based on the full AI ML analysis as time passes and more and more slices being uh, deployed in the network, we will really move uh, to machine learning based system with a prediction where you uh, apply your action before actually any breach in the system has happened, but in advance. Uh, with that said, let's move to the next plan. Uh, and I promised to show and to talk about uh, standardization. So since this is a very hot topic, there are really all of the different standardization body dealing with slicing one or another way. So if we talk about free GBP, and this is probably the major one, free GBP defines network slicing, including use case realization and modeling for N and for core. ATNFP defines virtualized domain of, uh, or in another words, what ATSI and FVO should do in order to orchestrate network slicing. ATSI make, of course, orchestrate H platform for VRAN and low latency services. ATSI the DPM, the, the same is the uh, organization standardization body which actually defines end-to-end -end network slice and how it's supposed to function across RAN transport and core and consolidated view of assurance for the network slice and of life cycle management for the network slice. GCMA has developed, uh, GCMA has developed a different slice profiles. MAP-LSO uh, develops end-to-end -end service orchestration and APIs between domains and carriers. Specifically for the open source, the biggest work has been done in ONAP, ON, and ORAN. ORAN also includes open source community in order to develop a de facto standard open source implementation for network slice, uh, for network slicing. And this is really a very, very, very important work. As you know, we validate what actually in ONAP and in ORAN, what actually is being defined by standards. In many cases, by the way, we could figure out that something has not been defined fully. And when we take it back to standardization bodies, we have an ongoing relationship with free GPP, with ETSI the same, with ETSI and FV, with MAC, and we only kind of, you know, we basically validate whatever they define. We provide that early implementation of whatever they define and we take it back to them in order to fix the fee system. So this is really the best possible way in which standard uh, works in the industry of actually validated it right away uh, along with the definition of how that should work. Uh, let's move and uh, on the next slide, what I show as an example is network size management and how it is being defined in at CNFB to show basically that, you know, as I said, all of the organization also here working together. So what you can see on the upper side of the picture, CSMF, NSMF, NSSMF, uh, defined by PGPP, communicating with NFVO, and that interface is defined by SNFV. NFVO is an orchestration uh, defined by SNFV, and the way that whole slice and manager system communicate with element management, with DNF manager, and whatever is exist in uh, the system. By the way, not necessarily all of the network functions are virtual. It can be PNF, physical network function. It can be VNF, virtual network function. It can be even cloud native network functions. So uh, the system supports, supposed to support, and actually support all those types of network function, and specifically ONAP also supports all those types of a different of network functions uh, in order to see them 
to combine them into the slides to get a measurement from them and to operate them. For physical network function, of course, there are some limitations in terms of auto scaling, in terms of auto healing, but whichever can be done also for PNF is being performed. Uh, this goes back a little to the definition was important to kind of, you know, show that whole definition of the network slice related management function as being defined by 3GBP because we refer that to that a lot in our work. So communication service management function, again, is getting the communication service request like Volte, for example, and speaking with NSMF translates actually the received requirements into a network slice related requirements and passes them to network slice management function. The network slice management function is communicated is a different domain management, also domain orchestrator, NSSMF, in free GBP terminology, the being called slice subnet management function. It basically splits the service, network service requirements for different domain requirements and vice versa, gets information from a different domain about slice operation, about slice assurance, in order to be able to actually, again, operate and change the network slice in the end-to-end -end view. Uh, this uh, is also a very important slide as uh, we talk about ONAP and we also talked about ONAP and MDOC system and I'm talking about MDOC solution for network slicing is based on ONAP, our SDC, our AI uh, actually not just coming from ONAP, but we co-created them in ONAP along with HNT since the very start of ONAP. So you can see on this slide definitely how widely slice manager implementation is across a different ONAP modules. It covers quite all of major ONAP, ONAP modules, SDC, AI, uh, SO, SDNC, APC, CDS which is a relatively new uh, module in ONAP uh, portal, analytics entity, which is DC policy, OOF uh, entity, OOF is about placement and homing in ONAP. So you can see here slice management, onboarding, configuration and control, uh, optimization, all this is handled by different ONAP modules and quite everything is supported right now, which is not that work has finished, but we're advancing a lot of system pieces also now in Guilin release. And, you know, even as we talk, uh, really we have, you know, almost a daily discussions on the functionality of the different modules in order to support network slicing. And hopefully uh, by Guilin release, it would be a, we would be able to support all those, you know, different layers of slicing, CSMF, NSMF, NSSMF, also internal to ONAP and external providing by a vendor and then connectivity to the external NSSMF. And that would basically mean that any service provider can take, you know, ONAP solution for network slice and actually deploy them. Uh, just a few words on the POC that we ran in MDOCS on actually connecting or showcasing the network slice functionality with the real vendor implementation. So we had a collaboration with Mavenir for their 5G core with Toelco for the assurance system, Nexar for the actual service, a cast service running on top of the slice. And within that POC, we designed network slice service create terminated 5G core subnet, did scaling in out for the core slice. The emphasis was on the core network functionality. So as I said, the functionality, the full functionality runs across RAN transfer and core and show 5G core slice in inventory. That's extremely important in order, you know, to see really the resources of a different network functions and to know in the real time on where there is a possibility to scale, to heal, there is a need to scale, to heal, and so on. So there is a road to network slicing, right? As I said previously, it all will not happen one day. It is not that in one day from the system which supports a different services running over the same network, 
we are going to support really a, a virtual network provided for each type of the service. And this is what slicing is about. So if we go, if we look specifically on how evolution would be done, uh, and by the way, it is also important to highlight that the real advantage of the system can be uh, implemented or can be get only when we have a 5G standalone, which means a new radio along this 5G standalone core. Uh, so at the beginning of the real slicing deployment, network slicing deployment, you know, we would have capacity base perhaps service specific slices, uh, not that many of the slices, I would anticipate three, four, five, six different types of slices, perhaps several services with a similar characteristics running over the same slice, perhaps a single one. Next step would be deploying it more at scale, which is meaning more different types of slices uh, implemented in the network, automation, introduction to some level, perhaps not the full ML leveraging, but some automation level for scanning, for healing will be there. Edge computing, of course, because for typical 5G operation, as I said, you know, a low latency is needed, and this is why, you know, this is where edge is coming into the play. Now, as we move for the, through, I would say, 2028, 2029, we would really see uh, that coming into the big scale in terms of many, many network slices or slice instances types required in the network and the full 5G coverage would be implemented, not just in some ge geographical places, there would be a possibility to actually leverage slice, but pretty much everywhere. And basically all would be application driven, not just for the services, you know, initially defined in catalog, but really in a dynamic way when requirements for the service or for the application are coming, the slice is, you know, automatically being created by the system, assured, operated, assured by the system. And we are going there. Of course, the road may take a while, but eventually we are heading there. And in that sense, you know, I kind of speak was from the perspective of MDOX and from the perspective of ONAP here. So also we in MDOX, as I showed, you know, on the previous slides, are taking our step in that direction on building our end-to-end -end network slice manager by ONAP requirements, actually based on ONAP. And when I said based on ONAP in parallel, lots of work is being done actually in ONAP to extend and enhance functionality of the network slice. And so whatever we are taking from there as a vendor is being enhanced all the time. Eventually it will be, and as I said, many significant steps has already been passed. End-to-end -end systems supporting RAN, transport and core across the different domains, across the different public and private cloud types, across the different wheels uh, for PNFs, for VNF, for CNF, support of all of those network functions for the slicing, and uh, we are getting there. With that, I would like to thank you and uh, answer any questions you may have. Hello, everyone. We have now taken the phone bridge live, and you can ask questions of Ala via the Q&A chat. We do only have about a minute uh, for or so for uh, live questions. After that, you can go to a Slack channel that I will send out as a broadcast in a moment to continue the conversation. Ala, there is a couple of questions already. We've moved those over to the admin chat if you want to take a look at those and respond to at least the first one. Sure. Let me... Look into that. Um, just uh, okay. Uh, there is an success in this infrastructure, in this architecture. Many vendors tell us limitation of the shown here. Want to deploy slice and manage to each domain and then top level. Uh, probably the attention was to NSS MF. Right, so uh, yes, NSSF, because NSSF 
is a part of the core network architecture. NSSMS is the domain manager. And yes, uh, the idea here is NSSMF, that NSSMF would be managing each one of the domains separately, NSSMF per domain, and there is NSMF layer, which is network sliced uh, management function, which actually kind of coordinate and correlate those NSSMFs and uh, doing it in a closed loop operation by actually getting measurements from everyone and then, you know, providing the comments to everyone, splitting it among the different domains. But per each one of the domains, there would be its own NSSMS. Uh, also, um, uh, can you describe the dynamics of setting up IP? Uh, okay, I see. And, uh, uh, Ella, uh, Ella, unfortunately, I'm sorry, that is, it is time for uh, the end of our session. Um, but I have broadcasted the Slack channel. We'll move the remaining two questions that were in the Q&A chat over to the Slack channel, and then you can continue the conversation via the Slack channel that uh, was in the broadcast message. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you all for those attending the session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.